I think just based on the sacrifices that they've made and what they've given to our country, they they deserve that. They deserve attention from the legal community to help them get the benefits that they deserve and that they're entitled to. Over the last five years, then, there's been a concerted effort by the VA to bring in community providers, including legal services, to work with veterans facing homelessness or veterans who are homeless to um, address the barriers they face to housing. It's also important to recognize that these are veterans who their service periods range back to World War II all the way to present day. The role of the community in addressing the needs of veterans um, and the commitment to that has really increased after 9-11 and we're playing catch up a little bit um, in terms of addressing the needs of also older veterans as well. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Lawyer to Lawyer, with J. Craig Williams and Robert Ambrosi, bringing you the latest legal news and observations with the leading experts in the legal profession. You're listening to Legal Talk Network. Hello and welcome to Lawyer to Lawyer on the Legal Talk Network. I'm Craig Williams coming to you from Southern California. I read a blog called May It Please the Court. Bob? And this is Bob Ambrogi coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts, where I write a blog called Law Sites. And uh, I also co-host another Legal Talk Network program called Law Technology Now with Monica Bay. And before we introduce today's topic, let me just take a moment to thank our sponsor, Clio. Clio is the world's Leading cloud-based legal practice management software, thousands of lawyers and legal professionals trust Clio to help grow and simplify their practices. You can learn more about Clio at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. And we probably should mention they've got this big conference coming up uh, September 19th and 20th, the Clio Cloud Conference, uh, which you can read about at uh, ClioCloudConference.com. You going to that, Craig? I am not, but I know you are, Bob. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Representing. Good for you. (laughs) Well, Bob, after our veterans return from combat and active duty, they can face a host of legal issues once they get back to the reality of home, from homelessness stemming from evictions and foreclosures to child custody disputes to problems with benefits. Veterans can have various legal needs due to their lengthy separation from home and are in need of assistance. And there's a couple of projects out there that we're going to talk about today, including some of the suicide issues. And increasingly, there is help for those who have put in their lives on the line for the people of this country. The legal community has made uh, strides in a number of ways in assisting our veterans in these legal disputes. Today on Lawyer to Lawyer, we're going to take a look at various legal issues facing veterans and discuss the legal needs and how attorneys and organizations are stepping up to assist veterans with their legal problems. Well... To do so, Bob, we have two guests. Our first guest today is attorney Richard Spataro. He is the director of training and publications for the National Veterans Legal Services Program, better known as NVLSP. Rick is the director of outreach and education for the Veterans Consortium Pro Bono Program as well and has represented hundreds of veterans before the U.S. Court of Appeals. Before embarking on his legal career, Attorney Spataro served as a surface war officer in the United States Navy, so he knows what it's like to be a veteran. Welcome to the show, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Bob and Craig, for having me. And next to join us today is Robert Liscord. Robert is the Veteran Services Coordinator and Paralegal for the State of Maine's largest civil legal aid provider, Pine Tree Legal Assistance. Rob has presented on the value of social work legal services collaborations at the state and national level, including at the 2015 National Coalition for Homeless Veterans Conference. In the spring of 2013, he co-authored a report entitled Serving Those Who Served, Understanding the Legal Needs of Maine's Veteran Community. Welcome to Lawyer to Lawyer, Rob. Great. Thank you much, Bob and Craig. And Bob, in the spirit of full disclosure, I should also disclose that I'm a veteran of the United States Coast Guard. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the legal issues facing veterans. Bob, can you give us a quick overview of what veterans face when they come back from combat duty and active duty? Yeah, um, absolutely. So I think what we see a lot, uh, so at Pine Tree Legal Assistance, Pine Tree being Maine's largest civil legal aid provider, a lot of the issues that we see are, I think it's important to recognize that veterans face many of the same civil legal issues that the general population faces. It just may have an additional layer related to their military service. 
So for example, we regularly see individuals having issues with transitioning and job placement, debt collection and harassment, issues related to child support and ability um, to pay um, as they transition out and their income changes. And then of course, issues related to housing, such as eviction and foreclosure, increasingly more common after the housing crisis that we had. Um, Those are some of the largest issues that we see. And then, of course, you have issues around veteran homelessness, where um, there's a high rate of homelessness among veterans. And over the last five years, then there's been a concerted effort by the VA to bring in community providers, including legal services, to work with veterans facing homelessness or veterans who are homeless to um, address the barriers they face to housing. It's also important to recognize that these are veterans who their service periods range back to World War II all the way to present day. The role of the community in addressing the needs of veterans um, and the commitment to that has really increased after 9-11, and we're playing catch up a little bit um, in terms of addressing the needs of also older veterans as well. One of the things, we've, we've done a couple of shows uh, in the past on veterans issues, uh, not in the recent past, but years ago. One of the things that's just brought this to the forefront, uh, again, uh, at least in my mind, is that ABA uh, just announced at its annual meeting in San Francisco a, a, a major effort. ABA President Linda Klein has said she's going to launch a major effort this year to mobilize lawyers on behalf of providing more and better legal services for the nation's veterans. Rick, I wondered, from your perspective, what is it about veterans that requires us to give them kind of special attention within the legal community? Well, I think just the fact that they have given their service to us as a nation and they have a tough time when they come back dealing with the VA disability system. That's, that's where my perspective comes from. Uh, the work I do is related to VA disability benefits primarily. And I think just based on the sacrifices that they've made and what they've given to our country, they, they deserve that. Uh, they deserve attention from the legal community to help them get the benefits that they deserve and that they're entitled to. And is there a lack of services if there aren't services specializing on the legal needs of veterans, are there a lack of other services out there that would be available to assist them? I think when it comes to the disability compensation system and the disability benefit system, there are a lack of advocates. Um, there's you know, hundreds of thousands of veterans trying to seek benefits from the VA and a huge backlog in the VA system. And there's just simply not enough attorneys or lay advocates to assist those veterans to meet the demand for services. And it's a very difficult system to navigate. It's overly bureaucratic. Uh, The VA is really a numbers-based system, and uh, navigating that system can be extremely difficult to do alone. What should veterans themselves be doing? Where do they need to go to find assistance with the issues that they face? And this is a nationwide problem. I think that uh, a good starting point for most veterans are uh, veteran service organizations groups like the American Legion, Military Order of the Purple Heart. These are, again, lay advocates who assist veterans with the initial claims process, uh, filing a claim, helping the veteran identify benefits to which they may be entitled. Um, And that's an excellent place to start rather than trying to go it alone. NVLSP, the organization I work for, we we do a lot of training of these lay advocates. Uh, We try to act as a force multiplier to, you know, educate them and enable them to better assist veterans. So that's where I would point a veteran initially looking for VA benefits, work with a veterans advocate from one of those veteran service organizations. Rob, as I mentioned in the introduction, you in 2013 helped do a survey in Maine evaluating the legal needs of veterans in that state. What did you find out? Yeah, so what we found is we surveyed both veterans and the service providers who work with them. Because of our focus on low-income veterans, most of the veterans we surveyed were low-income in some way. And the top needs that we saw from both service providers and veterans included problems accessing military benefits, such as VA benefits that Rick is talking about, issues maintaining a job, maybe they need a disability accommodation in a work setting, Uh, Debt collection ranked very high, Um, child visitation, custody, or support issues, and divorce matters. Um, And then the general kind of keeping government benefits broadly, so Social Security disability, food stamps, other public benefit programs. The other piece that I think was really key and is why um, 
is one of the reasons why Pine Tree is really focused on partnering with social work agencies and the VA is we really found that service providers and veterans had a difficult time identifying the social issues they were facing as having a legal component. The story I always share is of a social worker at the VA who used to ask veterans, do you have any legal problems? Because they knew they were connected with Pine Tree. And the veterans' response undoubtedly was often, well, no, I don't have any issues with the police. And I think for most non-legal advocates, that's pretty much the perspective about the role of a lawyer. Um, Of course, um, there's a whole range of issues, including VA benefits, debt collection, eviction foreclosure, where a lawyer can play a key role in supporting a veteran who's going through a tough time. So a lot of our work has been around educating those providers who have been working with veterans for years on the legal resources available to assist veterans and hopefully increase their overall stability, their health, or um, make sure that they're able to stay in safe housing. I know that one of the things that you've done, I don't know if you were directly involved in this, is to, I know that Pine Tree was involved in launching uh, the website called statesidelegal.org, yep. uh, which I think was actually launched in a ceremony at the White House, is, is, is yes. that correct? Absolutely. How is that addressing either the service provider network or the veterans' needs directly? Absolutely. So um, as background, Stateside Legal was launched in 2010. It's a project funded through uh, Legal Services Corporation. And the goal of Stateside Legal is to provide a resource connecting veterans, service members, and their families with the legal resources on the issues that affect them and the laws specific to their needs on a national basis. So what we've done is we've, we've built a whole host of education materials specific for veterans, service members, and their families, ranging from the issues of VA benefits to Service Member Civil Relief Act, Fair Credit Reporting Act issues, um, and then also connecting those veterans with the local state-level service providers who may actually be able to help them address those concerns if a legal issue arises. And I would say to add to what Rick was saying in terms of where veterans can start, one place that we go with stateside is, especially in the VA benefits world, is it is very important to know that there are resources so you don't have to go through the process alone. But we are big advocates for making sure veterans are are aware of the process and are empowered to understand the process themselves to make sure that they are maximizing the benefits that they're eligible for and that they're asking the appropriate questions of the service organizations or the individuals who are working with them to make sure they're really aware of what they could be eligible for. And so stateside has been accessed from all 50 states and around the world because, of course, we we engage with the service member network as well. And most recently, we've really tried to build resources for social workers and advocates who work with veterans to make sure that they can access and are aware of the resources in each state that can help address either general civil legal needs or the military and veteran-specific projects. And lastly, on state side, is I know we will be working with um, the NVLSP and the Veterans Pro Bono Consortium to build some resources around the VA benefits appeal process to tap into the network of veterans who access the website already and making sure they're aware of the appellate process that's available to them if they're denied uh, their claim at the initial stage. Do you know if you'll be working with the ABA's uh, initiative? Yes. Um, yeah, so a Pine Tree Legal and Stateside Legal we're fortunate to be included in the ABA's Legal Services Network Summit, which was a coming together of providers who have been working with veterans for many years and trying to find creative solutions. Stateside Legal will be a part of that, but also we want to help support the ABA's projects that they're going to develop on their own. It's really about sharing best practices across the country. There's some great programs either on the pro bono side, the legal services side, or the information technology side, and making sure we're all aware of what we're doing uh, to make sure that we don't recreate the wheel when somebody's already built a great system. Rick, there's a, a veteran service organizations out here in California that are funded by the state and one in each county that provide additional services for veterans. But one of the things I wanted to talk about was how veterans, the VA administration deals with veterans. What's the issue with the number of suicides that we're seeing with veterans? What kind of help do we need to put into place there? Well, uh, most states like California have county service officers who work on claims. They're typically state employees, and they, um, they often work with the national service organizations and um, assist veterans with filing claims. Now, I'm, I can't really speak. I, I don't consider myself an expert on uh, you know, suicide-related issues. 
um, and healthcare type issues. But I do know there is a big interplay with PTSD not being you know, properly treated, not having enough healthcare options available for veterans who suffer from mental disorders, um, depression and PTSD to be specific. And, and I think the VA is trying to do a better job at treating those, those veterans who suffer from those problems, but it is a continued problem. I mean, I think that might be more of a, uh, a, again, a medical side issue that needs to be addressed by the medical community, but advocates and, and attorneys can certainly help in referring veterans that they see have, may have problems related to mental disorders, especially related to the military service, and making sure that they, they do get the help they need. Veterans are often very reluctant to, to seek help. Uh, just the, the nature of being in the military and being a veteran you know, you think you're tough. You think you can handle things on your own. And I think it's very important for advocates to let veterans know that, you know, they, they don't have to be alone in, in fighting these mental disorders and um, shouldn't be afraid to seek help. We're going to continue our discussion in just a moment, but we're going to take a quick break first to hear a message from our sponsor. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Clio is an invaluable software solution for law firms of all sizes, handling all the demands of your growing practice from a single cloud-based platform. Clio enhances your firm with features such as matter and document management, time tracking, and even billing. Clio is an effortless tool that helps lawyers focus on what they do best, practice law. Learn more at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O.com. And welcome back to Lawyer to Lawyer. This is Bob Ambrogi, and uh, joining uh, my co-host, Jay Craig Williams, and I today are attorney Rick Spataro, director of training and publications for the National Veterans Legal Services Project, and Robert Liscord, Veterans Services Coordinator and paralegal at Pine Tree Legal Assistance. And I want to follow up a little bit on, on Craig's question, because we were, you were talking about some of the medical issues, and specifically the question of suicide, but other medical issues that come up for veterans. And what we're seeing in, in a lot of fields uh, in, in areas of legal services uh, these days are the sort of emergence of, of medical legal partnerships based on the theory that uh, medical problems often have uh, legal bases in some ways. Uh, if people don't have proper housing or proper benefits, uh, it can lead to medical issues. Rick, what's being done with regard to veterans' legal help uh, in terms of medical legal partnerships, if you know? Well, um, our organization, uh, National Veterans Legal Services Program, and specifically uh, our Lawyer Serving Warriors Program, is actually in the process of developing a relationship and a, a network of psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, medical professionals in the mental health community to assist veterans, particularly with obtaining VA benefits. Um, I know it's it's a work in progress. Um, I believe it's off the ground, and I'm not the director of that program by any means. But that uh, our goal through that program is to help these providers will not only treat, but more specifically provide medical opinions in support of disability claims. But the way the veteran won't have to rely on VA medical professionals. They can prepare a claim in advance, get a medical opinion supporting their claim, get everything prepared so the claim will be granted quicker rather than relying on the VA to do its development of a claim. So that's, that's one thing that our Lawyer Serving Warriors program is in the process of doing. And I would go ahead and add that uh, Pine Tree Legal uh, this past fall launched a new medical legal partnership with our VA system here in Maine. Um, and I, we've been in touch with the VA General Counsel's office around these legal clinics with the VA. And I, what we're looking at nationally is there are 75 legal clinics that are co-located in VA facilities, or there were, and now we're jumping to 125 as of 2016, excuse me. Um, and 10 of those are officially what are called medical legal partnerships, um, which is the model, um, is a model that existed outside of the veteran community for some time where lawyers work with the physicians to look at the social issues that may have a legal component that are affecting a client's health. And I'd give an example. I, you know, I don't want to pretend that legal services can address the mental health concerns of veterans solely, but um, it, there's definitely a role to play. Um, our medical legal attorney shares a story where a veteran had come into his mental health provider uh, with a high level of anxiety and some triggering symptoms related to stressors in his personal life and his financial life. And when the physician had started 
probing into what was going on and saying, well, I can prescribe you some additional anti-anxiety medication. What the veteran shared with the provider was that, no, I, you know, I, I don't really want more medication. I, I'm, I'm not able to afford my mortgage or I'm, str- I'm really stressed about this potential foreclosure that I'm going to go through. And so then the role of these medical legals is to identify those issues and help providers think of those issues as the social and legal issues that they are, and then refer those veterans in a timely way to the legal services provider to help address that underlying social or legal issue that's affecting the mental health or physical health of a client. It's a really emergent model that the VA General Counsel's Office is in big support of, which we really appreciate. Um, in terms of overcoming and helping us work through um, the issues that go along with partnering with a medical facility um, with regards to HIPAA and other, other concerns. And it's been really exciting to see where that's been going. Rob, how do we reach out to homeless veterans? It's a serious problem and probably, probably the most underserved contingent of the community. Yeah. So uh, every year, um, there's something called the point in time count organized by HUD, uh, where they count all the homeless individuals across the states. And in Maine, what we have found is that um, you can do a traditional count, which is just counting those in the shelters. Um, But in in rural states like Maine, veterans have come to a state like Maine because they don't want to be in a shelter setting, um, and they're camping out in the woods. So there's many different ways to connect with veterans, but I think the number one way that service providers can connect with the veteran community is if if a service provider or legal service office is not asking the question, do you have military experience or have you served in the military, you're missing an opportunity to serve that client population. I give the example at Pine Tree, we started screening for that back in 2010. And immediately we saw that about seven or eight percent of our client population were already veterans. Now these are veterans who are facing things like eviction and homelessness. More broadly, I think it's really important that the service providers who are asking these questions and are screening for veteran services are both veteran-specific agencies like the VSOs that Rick mentioned, but also your traditional homeless service providers who may not have a veteran-specific focus, but really have a role to play in serving a population that are veterans that have earned certain benefits through their military service, but maybe because of something that happened when they got back from their deployments or their service, is very common with Vietnam veterans, they don't want to think about themselves as a veteran. So they don't identify in that way. But asking those questions and being present in places that are more traditional community settings can go a long way to identifying veterans who have long forgotten about their military service and are homeless because they're not accessing the resources available to them. A lot of veterans, I assume, are not going to qualify for legal services help or uh, pro bono help necessarily. They, they might fall into that kind of low bono category where they, they can't quite qualify for legal services, but they can't afford lawyer themselves. Rick, does your organization help uh, in that situation? What kinds of legal resources are available to veterans to sort of fall into that low bono gap? Sure. NVLSP, we we don't have a specific income requirement for our, the veterans we assist, but most of our work is related to um, appeals at the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims. Uh, so we don't we don't get involved in a lot of the same issues that Pine Tree does related to the homelessness, related to the you know, initial VA claims process. So luckily, again, we don't we don't have any kind of income requirement. As far as the Veterans Consortium Pro Bono Program, who also handles cases at the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims, there is an income requirement there. But I think that, you know, a lot of a lot of attorneys out there who want to get involved in veterans law, I don't think that the income of the veteran is should be an important issue to them. I mean, if, whether you are currently, you know, a poor veteran or a rich veteran, you still sacrificed, you still you know, you put yourself in harm's way by by volunteering to be a soldier or a sailor. And, you know, I, th- I think that I don't think the income is that important to many attorneys. So I just it would encourage any attorney who wants to get involved in assisting veterans that I, I hope that's not a, a major concern for them. Does your program provide training to lawyers who do want to get involved who may not have the background in, in benefits that they might need? We do, actually. And that's one of the things I primarily work on. We I keep on mentioning veteran service officers um, who are lay advocates, but and we do a lot of training of those people, those advocates. But we also train attorneys as well. We we conduct trainings for uh, lots of legal service providers um, throughout the country. Um, we provide webinars open to any attorney who's interested in veterans law. 
we do uh, training for both attorneys and lay advocates. We have a lot of lawyers who listen to this show, and some of them want to get involved in representing veterans and helping veterans. Where should they go? Who should they call? I think a great place to start is with the Veterans Consortium Pro Bono Program. That's an organization where individuals can, can volunteer to assist a veteran at the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims. They will be trained. We provide training. We provide a full day of training for those attorneys in the backgrounds of veterans law, the VA appeals process and claims process, navigating the court system as well. Uh, So it's a good way to jump into the veterans law uh, area of practice. And then you're assigned a case that has been screened by the the consortium and you're assigned a mentor. You're really, there's a lot of hand-holding and really it's a great way to get involved and learn about veterans law. And then one of the goals of the consortium is to increase the number of attorneys who practice veterans law. Again, another force multiplier effect. We hope that by, you know, walking you through your first case, giving you training, then you will, you know, take that training and represent veterans on your own and assist veterans. So that's one way we, the consortium provides training. NVLSP also works with, uh, through our Lawyers Serving Warriors program with lots of big law firms. We have a similar program, which is more focused at placing cases at the agency level rather than the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims. And we train attorneys in in many of these big firms we have partnerships with who those attorneys volunteer their time to assist the veterans, you know, at the agency level, at the VA, at the lower level claims process rather than the, the high court level of appeals. Well, gentlemen, it's just about the end of our show here, so we'd like to wrap up and get your final thoughts along with your contact information for our listeners and maybe even speak to how individuals who are not attorneys can get involved and help veterans. So, Rick, let's start with you. Sure. Um, I guess my final thoughts would be veterans do have a difficult time navigating this, this complicated bureaucracy of the VA, and one of the biggest problems we see is veterans not knowing what they're entitled to. And as an advocate, as an attorney, as a lay advocate, you can, you know, one of our goals is to help you to help a veteran identify what benefits they might be entitled to. A lot of times they're fixated on PTSD because that's been in the news, but they have other disabilities that they might be entitled to benefits for that they don't even know about. And due to the complicated legal rules you know, it's very important to have trained advocates and trained lawyers to help veterans identify those benefits. So I'd hope that, you know, we get interest of more attorneys to practice veterans law uh, to assist those who have, you know, sacrificed so much for our country. And my contact information is Rick, R-I-C-K, underscore, Spataro, S-P-A-T-A-R-O, at N-V-L-S-P, Dot org. And um, you, know, you can contact me with respect to our work at NVLSP and the Veterans Consortium Pro Bono Program, and I hope that uh, hopefully I will hear from some of you. Thank you. Great. And Rob? Yeah, I think I would echo a lot of Rick's comments uh, in terms of knowledge about eligibility for non-attorneys. Being aware of your state agencies that can help, uh, the state VSO organizations, the state bureaus of veteran services, and you know a veteran or a service member, encourage them just to sit down with that person to determine eligibility and then support that veteran in making sure they follow through with the process. For attorneys, I would say I echo Rick's concern and the need for working with veterans specific to their claims, especially in the area of related to discharge upgrades, related to post-traumatic stress or military sexual trauma. Uh, but I would also say, too, don't uh, if you're an attorney and you're feeling like you can't take on a new practice area at this time for your pro bono or your paying work, um, I think it's just important to recognize that veterans and their families face many of the same legal challenges that the general community does. And your expertise in family law, consumer work, bankruptcy, housing issues, um, or corporate nonprofit development there's a real role to play in supporting our veteran and military community within your practice areas as well. So I strongly encourage folks to reach out to their state pro bono programs and express an interest in work with veterans specifically. Um, They definitely can be put to use even within your practice area if taking on a new area is not something you can do at this time. For my contact information, people are welcome to reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to get people in touch with other advocates in other states that we're connected with as well. Um, And my contact information is 
rliscord, L-I-S-C-O-R-D, at P-T-L-A dot O-R-G, P-T-L-A standing for Pine Tree Legal Assistance. And I thank you so much for the time today and for the listeners listening in. Well, I'd just like to thank both of you for the really important work that you're doing and uh, also for taking the time to be with us today. I really appreciate it. And Bob, before we end the show, I just want to add one more thing for California veterans. You can now get your veteran designation on your California state driver's license if you go to the local county veteran services office. Great. Thanks. Well, we've been talking with Richard V. Spataro, Director of Training and Publications for the National Veterans Legal Services Program, and Robert Liscord, the Veteran Services Coordinator and Paralegal for Pine Tree Legal Assistance in Maine. Thanks a lot to both of you for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. For our listeners, thanks for listening. Join us next time for a great legal topic. When you want legal, think lawyer to lawyer. Thanks for listening to Lawyer to Lawyer, produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. Join J. Craig Williams and Robert Ambrosi for their next podcast, covering the latest legal topic. Subscribe to the RSS feed on LegalTalkNetwork.com or in iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Consult a lawyer.